This tutorial will be covering how to calculate metrics, general calculations with the X-Ray library. X-Ray is built on top of NumPy, which means it implements many of the NumPy operators as native methods. And those it doesn't can still be used on the underlying Num NumPy arrays contained within an X-Ray data array object. This is intended as a short int introduction with a focus on climate data. The X-ray documentation on computation is excellent and contains many more examples and much more detail. So first step, we'll import the array. We'll use our matplotlib inline magic as covered in the previous tutorial. And we'll load our data set and make a local variable called, uh, well, variable called TAS to point at the surface temperature data set within a data array within the data set. So pretty much as before, this is our surface temperature data array with 18, 1872 time steps, latitude, longitude. So it's straightforward just to calculate the mean for all locations and all times in the data. We just use dot mean. This should this will take a wee while because it's got to load all that data over the inter, over internet connection. There we go. The mean for all that data is 277.59. Maybe not that useful, but anyway. So it's possible to specify a dimension along which to compute an operator. So for example, to calculate the mean in time for all locations, we, speci we specify the dimension time as a, an argument to the, to the operator. So it, will, so it will calculate the mean along that dimension. And we'll, we'll chain the plot operator after it to visualize that. So there we have it. It's a single 2D data array, latitude and longitude, and that's the mean, mean for each position for all time. It's common in uh, climatology circle in meteorological circles to calculate a 30-year climatology so at all at all points for 30 years. We can do that uh, quite easily using the cell operator and we'll take a time slice from 1960 to the end of 1989 and then we'll specify the mean in time and we'll, we will assign that to a new variable called TAS underscore CLIM. So there we go, TAS underscore CLIM just has latitude and longitude as, as before, but rather than being as as this this was the, the plot above was a mean for all time. This is just over the 30-year time window that we've specified, and we can plot that. Probably looks pretty similar, um, maybe a bit warmer. So we can now calculate the anomaly from the 30-year climatology simply by subtracting it from the original data. So X-ray checks which named coordinates match between the between two data sets when you do a, ma a mathematical operation on them like this, and it broadcasts the TAS-CLIM data along the missing time dimension automatically. So TAS-CLIM does not have a time dimension. Um, it says, yeah, when it when it returns it, that's a good point. When it returns TAS-CLIM, it's still called TAS internally because you haven't told it to change it, but in fact. Uh, we, this is the climatological data. It has no latitude and longitude. This is a this is a separate. This is a new data set, but it just inherits the naming from the previous data set. But it has no time dimension. So in order to be able to take TAS CLIM away from TAS, which has a time dimension, X-ray automatically broadcasts TAS CLIM along the time dimension. It basically makes copies, effectively, of it along the time dimension. So we can now, so we can make a thing called TAS anomaly, a, a variable called TAS anomaly, and that's all the anomalies from the climatology. Now we have all, we have a, we have anomalies, and we can plot them. So we'll select, we we'll use cell to select out just from 1960 onwards. Note this is in the slice operator. We're using 1960. January 1960 is the beginning date, and the end date we're, we're specifying is none. That just means it's open, so it will take. It won't have an upper bound. We'll take a mean. In this case, we'll do the mean 
in latitude and longitude. So not in, in time. And that will give us a one-dimensional data set. So this is the global mean of the anomaly in time from 1960 onwards to the end of the data set. So just go over that again. We've computed the anomalies by by taking away the climatology from 1960 to the end of 1989. And then we've, we're plotting those again. We're taking a slice just from 1960 so that it's easier to see. And we're taking a mean in latitude and longitude, which means a global mean, and plotting that. So we have time on the x dimension and the, and the anomaly on the y still called TAS, as I said, because it inherits that name from the underlying data set. You can change it, but um, that's what it's called inside the data itself. It hasn't inherited any other metadata. It's possible to, to copy attributes and things, but in this case it, it doesn't do it automatically.